Did you like?
trouble. To everything there is a season and a time to every purpose under the heavens. A time to be born and a time to die. A time to plant and a time to pluck up that which is planted. A time to give and a time to give. A time to break down and a time to build up. A time to weep and a time to laugh. A time to mourn and a time to dance. A time to cast away songs and a time to gather songs together. A time to embrace and a time to refrain from embracing. A time to get and a time to lose. A time to keep and a time to cast away. A time to rend and a time to sow. A time to keep silence and a time to speak. A time to love and a time to hate, a time to war, and a time of peace. What profit hath he that worketh in that wherein he labored? I have seen the travail which God hath given to the sons of men to be exiles in it. He hath made everything beautiful his time. Also he has set the world in their heart so that no man can find out the work of God make it from the beginning to the end. I know that there is no good in them but for a man to rejoice and to do good in his life. And also that every man should the good of his labor. It is the gift of God. You may be seated.
in man. This is the day that the Lord has made. My Bible says that we should rejoice and be glad in it. I know this is a home-going celebration, but is there anybody here that can just pause to give our God some praise? Come on, let's give our God some praise for another chance, another opportunity, another moment that he has given us. What an awesome and mighty and magnificent God we serve. Amen, amen. We're here for the homegoing services for our beloved Ethel T. Odom, sunrise August 29th, 1933, sunset April 25th, 2021. On this day, Tuesday, May 4th at 1 p.m. here at the Bethlehem Missionary Baptist Church, yours truly officiating. And we pray that each of you have a program and we will not insult you by reading of the entire program, but we will proceed as printed. At this time, uh, there is a song uh, in the garden, and uh, has that song been given to our attendant? If it has not, uh, do a substitute. It was another song that the family requested order. Steps and our musician will give us He restored my soul, 
you lead me in the path of righteousness for his sake's name. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I fear no evil, for thy heart with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of my enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil, my cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all of my days of my life. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. May the Lord have blessed to the reading of his word.
to the family. I just want to say that I had the opportunity to come up on her sister and the kind of person she was, she was so meek and humble. And like the sister stated, she didn't have a whole lot to say, but when she said something, you better listen. So I just love the spirit that she birthed in this place. And I want you to know that we will miss her. But I stood not to just talk, but to read the resolutions. And we have Bethlehem Missionary Baptist Church, a resolution in honor of Sister Ethel Tony Odom. We, the pastor, officers, and members of the Bethlehem Missionary Baptist Church, pause to gather together to celebrate the life of a strong, godly woman, Sister Ethel Odom, one of the mothers of this church. John 14, 1 through 3 says, Let not your heart be troubled. Ye believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you, and if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself, that where I am, there ye may be also. It is with this hope that we share in the loss of your loved one and share with you our great respect for Sister Ethel Odom. As she was a very active member of this church, the Deaconess Department and Mission Department until her health failed her. Whereas Sister Odom was a great wife, mother, grandmother, and inspiration to her family. Whereas Sister Odom served God, this church community, and community well and faithfully. Whereas Sister Odom was a faithful woman of prayer who loved God. Whereas Sister Odom served in the church with a gentle spirit. Whereas Sister Odom suffered much pain in her lifetime by the life of her parents, by the, I'm sorry, by the loss of her parents, Deacon Clifton and Sister Helen Tony, husband Joseph E. Odom, and beloved son, Yon Odom yet lived in such a manner to touch each and every one of us with great strength and fortitude. Therefore, be it resolved, the Bethlehem Missionary Baptist Church will cherish Sister Odom's loving spirit and will strive to carry on her legacy by living 
by loving each other and helping our church and community continue to carry out the will of God. I'm Belisa Lipmitted this fourth day of May, 2021. Reverend Dr. Montreal Whitaker, pastor. A copy of this resolution will be given to the family of Sister Ethel Odom and a copy placed in the archives of this church. And also there are several other uh, resolutions that will be given to the family. And they will come from the William Memorial CME Temple. William Memorial CME Temple, 7288 Greenwood Road, Shreveport, Louisiana, Reverend Dr. Deborah Tyler Coleman, Pastor. April the 4th, 2021, y'all bear with me, I don't have my glasses. Greeting to the family, friends, and faith partners of Ethel Tony Odom. Family is a bond few of us get to choose. It is a great blessing when family is the place of support, encouragement, and love. We are sure that the family of Ethel, Tony Odom, were recipients of support, encouragement, and love from their connection with her. As a daughter, sister, cousin, wife, mother, aunt, and grandmother, we saw her lavish care upon everyone to whom she was connected. She was an example of faith in action as she cooked, trained, disciplined, nursed, and nourished the strengths of hopes of her family. We urge you to carry her with love in your hearts, using the love she gave you to fuel your care of one another. We have the luxury of choosing our friends. These are people with whom we have common interests, who despite our differences, we enjoy their energy, stories, and ideas. Friends help us reach beyond our own viewpoint and teach us the meaning of trust and acceptance. As a friend, Ethel Odom laughed and cried with her friends. She was generous but not indulgent. She was a peacemaker, but she was fair. She was loyal, but she was truthful. We urge you to cherish her friendship with joy, keeping her laughter fresh and vibrant. Our faith partners invite us into their ceremony celebrations and allow us to see their viabilities. We share, praise, fellowship, and service to glorify God while fulfilling our commission to go ye therefore into all the world and make disciples. As a faith partner, Ethel Tony Odom shared her gift of music to uplift the people of God and express her own trust in God of salvation and eternity. We urge you to carry forth the mantle that Ethel Odom has laid down by continuing to lift songs of hope among the household of faith. We are blessed at the William Memorial CME Temple to have been family, friends, and faith partners with Ethel Odom. Our share connects with Joseph and her children, our bonds we remember with great love. Her beautiful smile was freely given in friendship, welcoming us into her embrace. Her commitment to sharing the message of redemption could be clearly seen as she worshiped with us through the years. On this day, as we celebrate her life, we want all her family, friends, and faith partners to remember her life of love, laughter, and labor. Remember with us her smile of joy, and let that joy replace her sorrow at the loss of her physical presence. Remember us, her gentle but tenacious spirit to work hard, care deeply, and seek peace. Remember with us her strength to preserve despite challenges and loss because God sustained us with strength beyond our strength. We join you today in celebrating the life of a much-loved family member, a cherished friend, a tr trustworthy faith partner, our God assures us of a great reunion in a kingdom where there is no death, no sin, no sorrow, no suffering. We will be restored if we remain faithful. We will don our robes, washed in white, of blood of the Lamb in there. And among the redeemed of God, we shall behold Ethel Odom, Ethel Tony Odom, in communion with her Savior. Hallelujah. Rejoice and be glad. 
Reverend Dr. David, um, sorry, Dr. Deborah Taylor Coleman, Minister Division, Pastor of the Faith Community of Williams Memorial CME Temple Church, Shreveport, Louisiana. And it's stated all these resolutions will be turned over to the family. Thank you so much. Washington High School Alumni Foundation. Resolution of Respect for Ethel Odom. Since it has pleased Almighty God to take the beloved on to her reward, where she will join the that great cloud of believers in the heavens, there is now a hush in our hearts as we come together to pay our respects to the memory of one whose full life was ended when she was called to join that innumerable heavenly caravan. According to his tender mercy, God, who is infinite in his wisdom, has seen fit to move from our midst, our beloved in Christ, by means of death on April 25th, 2021. Whereas Ethel Oda accepted a hope in Christ at an early age and demonstrated throughout her life a sincere and obedient walk with God. Whereas Ethel Odom was the sister of our alumni Gwen Kaysan and Mary Bethel, and the sister of former BTW principal Horace McZeal, wife, excuse me, BTW principal Dr. Horace McZeal's wife, Beatrice McNeil. Whereas Ethel Odom was in the first graduating class of Booker T. Washington High School in 1950. She participated physically and monetarily to many of the foundation's activities, reunions, and fundraisers. She was also faithful to Booker T. Washington High School, attending and supporting athletic, academic, and organizational fundraising events. Whereas the passing of our beloved Ethel Odom has left us with a broken heart, we acknowledge and accept the will of God. We know your hearts bleed with sorrow, but are comforted by knowing God will not put any more on us than we can bear. Whereas Ethel Oda will be missed, but never forgotten. Therefore be it resolved that we embrace the family because all of us have a common bond that will connect us for the rest of our lives. We can't replace Ethel Oda but we will attempt to demonstrate her love for all. Humbly submitted, Booker T. Washington High School Alumni Foundation, Sharon Johnson President, Deborah, and this was on the third day of May, 2021. First of all, I would like all of the members of Delta Sigma Theta Sorority Incorporated to stand. Mom's voice, you see, 
even in the dimly lit third floor room of, D of Dillard University, where voices of over 70 beta gamma loom. I know my mama's voice, you see, for my mama read and prayed for me. Thank you all for attending and paying your respects to my grandmother. She is truly a special woman who has met and become a mom and grandma to many, 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 many beyond our immediate family. And she has touched and changed so many lives. Some of you know me simply as the little kid that followed my grandma everywhere at church or at her class reunions. I would follow her anywhere because, because she led by example how to walk by faith. Another secret fact about her is that she could not wear a watch as they would stop working when she put them on. I believe that happened because she is truly timeless. I will close my time now with a prayer, a, a poem I wrote for her. Okay. It's called My Whole Heart. You always taught me to trust and obey, to follow his word each and every day. This requires us to listen and fully hear. When we believe in our Heavenly Father, there is nothing to fear. And Grandpa told me, when your life is in a struggle as you're reaching towards your goal, keep your eye upon the donut and not upon the hole. This is much larger than a hole. It's more of an abyss for you, Grandma. My mama, I'm always going to miss. But your wisdom and words still echo true. I will lean on the Lord and always love you. Now the family has uh, chosen some selections to be rendered as tribute to our beloved.
protection as well? First, let us say thank you, family, for giving us this opportunity to share this moment with you. Certainly, I would not prefer to be any other place and here, not under these circumstances, but to be allowed to have this opportunity. And so I thank you for giving us this honor. Several of our officers are here, missionaries. 
Jerry and other members are here to share with you all in, her, in this loss. Because your loss is our loss. I want to thank these past preachers for coming to share their love with you as well. Pastor Bennett, Pastor Sumner, Pastor Gardner. Thank them for taking time out of their schedules. And I do want to recognize there is a resolution that was submitted from the New Rocky Valley Baptist Church, amen, of Gremlin. So I do want to recognize that as well. I vow not to be before you long. There's a word found in Ecclesiastes chapter 7. And if you pray with me for just a few moments, I'll be out of your way. There was another tribute that was asked of by the family. If you would give me just 30 or 40 seconds, I'd do just a piece. And we'll get into the word of God. If I could help some Oh! 
Exodus 7, verses 1 through 3 read, A good name is better than precious ointment, the day of death than the day of one's birth. Better to go to the house of mourning than to go to the house of feasting, for that is the end of all men. And the living will take it to heart. Yeah. Sorrow is better than laughter. For by a sad countenance, the heart is made better. Amen. Amen. Just a brief few moments would have you to consider the subject getting something out of sorrow. Getting something out of sorrow. We, we've heard said in the remarks and tributes on today how beautiful a person inside and out Sister Odom was. We, we've heard detailed in the reflections just a few of the many highlights of her life how she lived a life centered on and around impacting others. Yeah. It takes a special person to be able to give of themselves so much so that they, uh, that they look past themselves to make sure others yeah. are in a better place. Yeah. And when I think about the very life Amen. A sister Odom, I, I, I've just known her, amen, for 41 years. Amen. Many of you have known her much longer, amen. Uh, but I believe all of us can come to the same agreement that she was some kind of woman. Amen. And the Lord has blessed us by knowing her and by having her in our presence. I, I was sitting there sharing with Reverend Gardner, and he, and he said he didn't know this, but I said, man, I can remember Sister Odom was the church musician. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah, she was the church musician. And, 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 and I actually sung, amen, my first song, amen, with, with, with she playing for the church, amen. Uh, uh, it, it, it didn't look like what we are now. Amen. It's a little red brick church. Amen. With no cushion on the pews. Amen. And, and with, with no carpet on the floors. Amen. And, 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 and in, in, in the winter. Amen. You, you would have some heaters, but it was still cold spots in the building. Amen. And in the summer. Amen. We would try to cool it off, but amen. Sometimes it just didn't get that cold. But we had good church. And we, we really learned how to praise and honor and cherish the Lord, amen, right over yonder, amen. And, and, and I would see her come in her, her radiance, amen, and she would give her service to the Lord. She would teach us, amen, and we would say we thought we were good, but we really weren't that good, amen. But she put up with us anyway. Amen. And as we were singing and pour our hearts out to the Lord, she would do her very best, amen, to make us be better because she wanted us to understand that our service was not unto man, but unto God. Lord oh, have mercy. Just the kind of woman that she was. And amen, just as you would know it, I don't know why the Lord does what he does. I'm, I, sometimes I still ask him, Lord, why do you do what you do? But by happenstance, he would bring me all the way back around. Amen. And would bring me, amen, to try, amen, try to give leadership. Amen. You'll catch that later. Amen. To the church that I grew up in. And amen, when I got here, there was a still small voice in the amen corner. You, you do remember when they used to call it the amen corner, don't you? A still small voice, amen, with a smile that just shined like the sunlight. 
And I can remember, amen, actually uh, the day that, that, that Bethlehem voted and called me, the very next day was the service for Sister Tony. The very next day, and, and, and we were here, and she called me over, and she whispered in my ear, she said, Pastor, I love you, and I'm praying for you. I said, baby, pray long and pray all, and I'm going to need it, amen. The Lord know what I'm doing, but I'm trying, Lord. And, and that exchange, that love, that time, that care, that compassion that she would take to just speak a word. Not a not a degrading word, not a not not a not a not a word that would discourage me, but she sp spoke a word of upliftment. You know, you can't always get that from everybody. You know, some folk don't know the right thing to say, but she always seemed to know the right thing to say. I don't know about y'all. Maybe it's just my story. I don't know, but she always knew the right thing to say at the right time for the right moment. And she had the right countenance with what she said. And I thank God for her very life. Because I can't speak for you, but I've been made better from the experiences shared with Sister Oak. Such a jewel. And now we're here because the Lord has so fit to retire his angel from labor to reward. Solomon here in Ecclesiastes 7 gives us a differing approach to view death. Because many times when we view death, we want to sorrow. And yes, if you love someone, you have good reason to sorrow. There is a passage of scripture that tells us to not, not, not let us cry, not let us be weary, not let us be uh, dismayed as those who don't have hope. Because the life that she's lived, if we know Christ and we know that she lived her life for Christ, because of the life that she's lived, we know that she has a better place. So even though we might cry, our tears are not be tears of sorrow. Our, te our tears ought to be tears of celebration. Because we know that if we get it right, one day we'll get to see her again. Here it is, Ecclesiastes 7, Solomon starts by saying in this text, a good name is better than precious ointment. Now in that time, ointment was something that was sold and it was very expensive to get your hands on this precious ointment. It was not just something that you found any old place and just couldn't anybody get it. But precious ointments were reserved for those who were royalty, those who had the means to purchase this. But why does Solomon say a good name is better than that? He, he, he wants us to understand that the life that we live and the name that we build for ourselves is much more uh, better than anything that we could ever purchase with worldly riches. Yeah. See, 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 your name goes on when you're no longer here. Yeah. And whatever name you build for yourself, guess what? That's the name folk going rem to remember you as. Amen. If you were a hellion, they're going to say she gone. Thank the Lord because all she did was raise, hello somebody. But if you were a joyous person, people are going to hate to see you to leave because they're going to miss the joy that you spread throughout the world. And the sad indictment, the indictment for a believer would be to live your whole life and people be gladder to see you leaving than they were of you coming. But we don't have to talk about that today because that's not our case. We've said right here today that everybody that came in contact with her, that met her, that knew her, we can rejoice over the spirit of Christ that was deposited in her and she didn't just keep it to herself, but she lived a life that said, I'm going to share what God gave me with everybody else. He gave me joy, I'm going to share it. He gave me peace, I'm going to share it. He gave me love, I'm going to share it. He taught me how to be long-suffering, I'm going to share it. She shared it with others. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, 
And Solomon says in the text that a good name huh, is more precious, better than precious ornament. First thing this text tells me is there's no need to sorrow because she gave a deposit even in her death. Look at the B clause of this first verse. It says, and the day of death is better than one's birth. Here it is. The writer wants us to understand that bringing life into the world is good. But if you've worked to establish a good name, your death is equally or better than your birth. Watch this. When we're born, parents have joy because they look at their newborn son or daughter who's coming into the world. But the reality is they don't know how that child is going to end up later on in life. Many a parent have celebrated the birth of a child and all that child did from the day they were born was cause them grief. But if you can have a person who born and live their lives to develop a good name. That, that, that two word phrase good name suggests that they have lived accordingly to the, the principles and precepts that God has put in place for us to live. They've done right by folk. They've loved others who were sometimes even unlovable. They've given to the poor. They've sacrificed their time. They sound like I'm talking about sister. They've done all these things in their lives and now it says this good name is more precious than ornament and it says the day of their death is better than the day of their birth because they've done some good stuff with the life that God gave them. And so, there's no need to sorrow because we see through her life she gave a deposit. Watch this, even in her death. Because even until she took her last breath, she still had a praise on the inside of her. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Got a chance to go see her several times after she moved with her daughter. And her granddaughter came down and tell Lady Whitaker, look, we're going to call Doc, see when they're going to be home, and we're going to roll to Ruston because I want to look at mother. Right. Yeah. I want to see her. Yeah. I want to talk to her on the phone. I want to look her in her face yeah. and let her see all this ugly. Yeah. <laughs> and so the first time we pulled up and she was there and she was a little weak but she wasn't too weak to where she wouldn't take time to talk to her pastor. I kind of felt all right about that. Yeah. She sat up and we talked and we talked. We talked till nightfall came and and uh, you know I'm I'm not no you know I'm I'm kind of blessed. So uh, I, I started feeling a uh, uh, dinner time calling. I said, Well, mother, it's time for me and sister work to go. It's about eight o'clock. We got to get back to Shreveport and dinner calling my name. Uh -huh. We had been there maybe two or three hours just talking. Yeah. I'm giving her. You know, updates. Everybody's good. This person is good. That person is good. We're doing these things. We're, this is what we have going on at the church. She's asking about everybody. And we're engaged in conversation. And I can see the joy still radiating on her face. Had another chance to see her. And I can remember she was resting. Don't wake her. Let her rest. But it was certain things that individuals, and I'm getting this, amen, from the family, certain things that individuals would say that even in her weakened state, she would still respond to. All right, all right, all right. Can I tell you, it don't matter what state you find yourself in, what's in you going to stir up when you hear something outside of you. And if she hears somebody talking about the Lord, she's going to squeeze your hand. She's 
she gonna wiggle her toes, she gonna try to move her head, that's because she knew something about who we were talking about. And when you live your life for the Lord, don't matter where you find yourself, in a wicked state or not, something in you still gonna stir up. She gave a deposit even in her death because I believe as graceful as she was, she left just as graceful. Yeah. Yeah. She knew who she was placing her hand in. And when the time was right, she slipped on into the hands of her father. Not only is there no need to sorrow because she gave a deposit even in her death, but there's no need to sorrow because we gained decisions on how to deal. Look at her life. Look at the many things she overcame. Look at the test and trials she endured. I was reading the program and I, I, I took a quick history lesson. I started learning all kinds of stuff. That she never mentioned because what she came through, she knew who brought her through. She knew where God had brought her from. So rather than harping on what it was, she just thanked who did it. Verse 2 says, better to go to the house of mourning than to go to the house of feasting. For that is the end of all men and the living will take it. To heart. Watch this. Since we're here now, she's given us an opportunity to not only mourn over her, but now we have time to think about getting our own selves in order. Yeah. 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 See, she's just loving enough yeah. to give us a model on what we should do. So that when we get to this place, we can ensure we got a place to go. And when you live your life the right way, those who you live your life in front of learn how to live their life. I'd not be an excuse for anybody that came in contact with Sister Odom to not know who the Lord is and what the Lord can do for you. I'm not being an excuse for anybody to not know that we serve a risen Savior who's still in the world today, a risen Savior who cares about us, who loves us, who attends to us. And if we live for him, who's prepared a place for us? We've gained time to make some decisions on how to deal with ourselves. Because, you know, sometimes we get so caught up in life that we feel like we never gonna have to pass this place. We feel like we got tomorrow, or next week, or next month, or next year, but the reality is no man knows the day or the hour. Not only when Christ shall return, but no man knows when it'll be our day. I'm, I'm at your hair. She gave a deposit even in her death. We gained decisions on how to deal, but then there's no need to sorrow because we get delight through our devastation. Verse 3 says, Sorrow is better than laughter. For by a sad countenance, the heart is made better. Even though this is a tough time, we get delight through our devastation and our heart is made better because we know how the story ends. I can't hear nothing again. I I said we know how the story ends. We know that she ends victorious. We know that she ends with a prepared place for her. We know that this story ends with her going to be with her heavenly father. And so even though we may be feeling low, don't let that lowliness linger because we can hang our hopes on the hollows of heaven. She was 
many things to many people. Yeah. And watch this. The good news is, as long as you keep her on the inside of you, she will be many things to many people. Her line here is not the end. But my Bible encourages me that for her, it's just the beginning. Because the Christian, they live their life for the Lord. The Lord has promised eternal life. And that's why we walk this Christian walk. Because we walk it for hope of an afterlife. And here she is. That's just a shell, y'all. But her spirit is going to be with the Lord. Because my Bible says one day the Lord is coming back again. And he's going to step out on the sky. Going to put one foot on the ground. And one foot going to stay in the sky. And the Bible says the dead in Christ will rise first. And we who remain shall be called up to meet them in the air. And I like that story in the Bible because it lets me that if we live right like she taught us to if we keep on serving the Lord like she showed us to then one day we will yeah, we will see her again so glad morning when this life is over she's gonna Just 
feet as a homeless dove. Now, now, Sister Donald could get you right, but she did it in such a lovely way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, she get you right, but she did it in such a lovely way. Amen. But I thank God for a very life. And I thank God for the, the, the factors that they've contributed to this church. Family, thank you all for sharing her with us for some nearly 89 years. And I say to God be the glory for the good things he has done. Amen.
will, would you stand with me?